Well, we'll get started, see if any, any latecomers join us as well. Um, if you've got any questions as we're going through, um, hopefully you can see the chat. Just feel free to drop any questions into the chat and we can we can pick them up at the end. We've got some time for Q&A um, at the end anyway. So at any point, just drop them into chat and then, yeah, I'll, I'll run through what's in there when we get to the end. Um, so morning, everyone. Um, I'm Chris Housecroft, pre-sales manager at Innovate. Uh, today, we are going to be running through um, effectively the new features for Sage 200 and, and particularly kind of as we've just had our 2023 R2 release um, a few weeks ago back in August. So we're going to go through some bits and pieces today as we go through. Um, as I said, um, if you've just joined us, um, we are recording. So, you know, if you do unmute later to ask any questions, um, that's fine. It'll just be on the recording and any any videos as well. I don't think I can see anybody else on, on video at the minute. Um, but if you do decide to turn on your video, you'll be, be featured on our on our recording. Um, so with that, I'm going to drop mine off um, and we will get started going through some slides then. So where I wanted to start this morning um, is just looking at um, is just looking at the, the Sage 100 life cycle. So we mentioned this in our um, in our presentation earlier in the year, and some of this will be kind of a, a bit of repeated information because I've got quite a lot of slides to go through. But Sage have introduced a life cycle. It's always, it's always kind of been there, um, but they've decided to kind of make it a bit clearer what the life cycle of the Sage 100 uh, product releases are. So um, as you'll see on the slide um, at the minute, there's uh, approximately three years. It, it was approximately um, because what was happening was the R2 was only getting the same end of support as the R1 release, but Sage have revised that now. So it is it is three years worth of support per release. Um, so you'll see at the top there on that um, slightly blurry image um, that we've just had a 2023 R2 release in August 2023. So that'll go through to um, extended support. Now it goes into extended support at the same time as the R1 release. It just goes to end of support uh, in August 2026. But what does that mean? Um, so that means that Innovate will still provide support for that version. Um, we're not going to stop supporting you. Um, our customers will, will help you in any cases where we can and provide you with any support. Um, but Sage may require um, an upgrade to a supported version to assist with any support cases. Um, so if there's anything that kind of doesn't look environmental or doesn't look like something that's um, that they can advise on and could be related to a bug or a version, then they won't provide us with support until you move on to a, a onto a supported version of the solution. Um, product retirement. So there was some that I've cut that off on this one. Now there was some product retirement versions last time. So due to kind of licensing and security updates. Um, but if you're on any of those versions, your Sage has likely stopped working now. So you definitely know if you're on any of those product retirement versions. So we're just advertised an end of support now. So with that, um, just kind of updated my slides from earlier in the year. Um, 2022 R2 has now moved out of support on the product life cycle. So anybody on version 2020 R2, um, if we needed to refer anything to Sage, they, they could ask us to move up to a supported version before providing us with, with support for you. So what I'm then gonna do is I'm just gonna run through some functionality um, that we've had in previous releases um, all the way up to date effectively. And, and we're gonna cover some of these things as we, as we go through. Um, I've, then I've got some kind of, unused or, or low used features at the end that you can maybe have a look at using yourselves. So we're going to go all the way back to the last supported version that we're on. Uh, so 2021 R1. So if you're on that 2020 R2 version and you're upgrading to 2023 R2, which we're talking about kind of later on today, you're going to get all of these features with this with this upgrade. Um, so in 2021 R1, we had the release, the first release of the web portal. Uh, this is a new web environment for Sage 200. So you still install it on the server. You've still got your full desktop environment, uh, but then they've added in this web portal that you can use with a with a connected or web user license, which allows you to use certain functionality in a web browser. So in the initial release, we had sales ledger, purchase ledger, nominal, cash book, stock control with certain functions in that. So we could create a new customer in the web portal. We could do a transaction inquiry in the in the web portal. Uh, we could enter certain transactions like invoices, um, but we don't have journals, for example in there at the minute. Um, we then um, also had Excel reporting provided free of charge. So that previously required an extra level of subscription to get the Excel reporting. 
Um, we're going to talk about that a bit later on anyway. So if you don't know what that is, um, we're, we're going to talk about that uh, in a minute. Um, and there were some changes in compatibility. I'm not going to kind of jump into those too much because we'll look at the compatibility for the for the latest version when we get there. Um, then we didn't actually have an R2 release in 2021. We jumped straight into 2022 R2. So there's a full 12 months of Sage working on that web portal functionality before the 2022 R1 release. Um, that added in the ability to do sales orders, sales quotes, view the sales order list, um, get documents or reports to Spooler, um, change your columns in there, and also get um, some extra functionality in the desktop, such as kind of cross-selling, suggest items, um, and alternate items to quotes, um, and then also expiry dates on quotes as well. So the ability to set expiry dates on quotes, as you'll see in the snapshot. Now, what I would say, obviously, sales orders is a big area of the Sage 200 system that a lot of users um, take advantage of. Um, a lot of users do have bespoke customizations that we've written for you in, in sales orders particularly, but other areas of the system. And so those bespoke functions um, aren't available in the web portal. So if you are using um, bespoke functionality, then, then the web portal wouldn't be the, the place to use um, at the minute. Uh, then there were some changes in compatibility. So, you know, Windows 7 was dropped off. It was quite old anyway. Some older versions of Windows Server, um, Microsoft Office, and, and some new versions coming in on there. Again, 2022 R2. So we had a second release then of more functionality. So the ability to dispatch goods within the web portal. And then they also added tracking information fields. So the ability to add tracking numbers, set up couriers. Um, there's no integration with couriers. It's just recording that information. Um, onto different areas um, on sales order dispatches. However, what it does mean is for those that have uh, website integrations and courier integrations, we previously had to utilize analysis codes for things like tracking numbers and courier information, whereas we can now store those on the dispatches themselves, which effectively gives us more fields to use. Um, and there was some more um, legislation updates just for Ireland um, with country of origin. Um, for the interest at use in, in Ireland. Uh, 2023 R1, again, more, more web portal functionality. There's a bit of a theme here, really. Sage are putting a lot of effort into, into, their web, um, into their web portal. So with the ability to do alerts on supplier accounts in the web portal and display if an account has active memos, um, the ability to then add multiple, warehouse, uh, multiple warehouses to items and warehouses to multiple items in, um, in Sage 200 through an import, um, import, export, update item locations. Um, they also increased the um, item code field to 60 characters. Um, they added supplier alerts and changed some functionality around allocation dates. Um, and then in the nominal, they also added the ability to import Vatable journals. So we've been able to enter Vatable journals in Sage 200 um, in the screens itself for a while, but they added the ability to import Vatable journals now. So there's a new um, nominal ledger import function um, template, and then the ability to print prior year journals as well. So when you enter a prior year journal, you can print a copy of it before posting. They also added, um, they moved the analysis codes on sales orders and purchase orders. So a lot of people kind of screen resolutions and things cut off the analysis codes area. So you can only see maybe two or three of the 20 that you get in there. Um, so they moved that onto its own tab. So um, if you go up to 2023 R1 and above, your analysis codes on sales orders and purchase orders have moved from that delivery and invoicing tab onto their own tab, which gives you a much cleaner view of that. Um, they've changed the um, ISO code from TRY to TRL. Um, and then the ability to um, save VAT return year end and bank recs to Spooler when using preview as well. Uh, it comes up with a little message saying, as you can see on the screen, that, that they can't be reprinted. So you can send them to a copy of the Spooler if you want to view them again. There was then some further compatibility changes. So the latest version of SQL uh, 2022 added onto there and some older versions again, Windows 8.1 dropped, um, Windows Server 2016 dropped and um, SQL Server 2016. So that was earlier this year, which nicely brings us up to date. So 2023 R2. So again, it's all about the web portal um, and some additional functionality. Although those of you on 2023 R1 uh, won't see any changes. Um, so if you're on 2023 R1, you might not want to dash to um, upgrade immediately unless this is something that you're interested in, in exploring. And what this is, is 
um, we can now develop these web portal screens. So at the minute we can customize the existing screens that are there. You might want extra fields and functions on the sales order screen to mimic what you're doing in say 200 bespoke maybe, um, or on any of the customer lists and, and things like that. Um, but what is coming is the ability to, uh, for us to add extra screens and build more bespoke into there. A lot of you have more complex bespoke where we've got additional screens and forms that we're popping in Sage 200. And so this is the first step of that journey to be able to build our bespoke into the web portal. Now it doesn't work magically. Um, it doesn't mean that everything that's already in Sage 200 desktop sales orders magically appears in the new sales order screen in the web portal. Uh, there's quite a bit of work for us to do. Um, so if you were having an upgrade into 2023 R2 or above, you know, we're going to get a hopefully a 2024 R1 um, in spring next year. Um, then you'd need to let us know that you wanted that bespoke or us to look at adding that bespoke onto the web portal if there are users that could use that web portal. Um, and we'd have to look at the effort required. Um, just on a recompile that we do now to get you onto the latest version doesn't doesn't add it into those web forms. Um, and so that's the main function really that's been added into 2023 R2. Lots of exciting stuff leading up to this, pushing into the web portal. Um, and then Sage have kind of sat back and thought, right, we, we want to get people using this web portal, but we can't get kind of bespoken add-ons in there at the minute. So how do we allow and facilitate that? And, and that's where they've gone with this release. And um, there is a slight change um, on some interest act codes for Ireland. Um, so if anybody on here is, is on Irish legislation, then there is a slight update um, on interest app for Ireland. So um, we can we can have a look at those if needs be in the help files, um, but it's just a very small change. And so with that, I kind of thought it would be a good opportunity to sit back and kind of have a look at if we were going on to 2023 R2, what versions could we go on rather than saying this has been added from support, this has been, this has been um, removed from support. Um, this is the current compatibility matrix for 2023 R2. So we can see that we've got, you know, Windows Server 2022 on there, Windows Server 2019 on there, um, and then SQL Server 2022, 2019, 2017. Um, and then we've also got the two versions of Windows for the client now. So obviously that Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 have been dropped, um, but we do work with, with Windows 11, which is more and more commonly coming through. So, so that there's kind of um, a bit of a bit of takeaway from today for anybody that's come along. Um, what I thought it would be really good to run through is there's no kind of major new features to run through um, with with Sage 200 2023 R2 is to run through some features that are that are in some of the newer versions that people aren't taking advantage of maybe. Um, and so I've highlighted a few areas that you know when I've been having conversations with customers recently. They didn't know they had access to these, these different features and functionalities. So the first one is workspaces. Um, and I don't just mean workspaces in product, I mean workspaces kind of in the browser as well. Um, so if we just kind of have a look, and if I just um, maybe share my screen a second. So I'm just on say 200 standard here, but this is the same for um, a professional as well. Um, so we can see within Sage 200, um, within certain menus, We've got under our inquiries these icons with globes on them. Um, some of you will already know this, and some of, of you will already use these. Um, or we've got the workspaces area that we can use as well. Um, this has got kind of loads of different kind of reports or, or views that you can use. Um, some commonly used ones for those that are using it is, for example, the payment control workspace and the purchase ledger. That's your suggested payments effectively. So instead of having to run your suggested payments, um, you can go in, you can see what's in the current suggested payments file. You can actually go in and, and go to your actions um, and kind of amend those as well. So you can go in and, and amend your suggested payments and things like that in here. Um, you can go in and, and kind of run transaction inquiries, export any of this, any of this data as well. Um, that's quite a nice one. Another one that's quite nice is the um, actually should have been the suggested payments one that I, that I should have been in. And um, the other one that's quite nice and popular is sales document status. And this is a sales order view, um, but on here you can kind of click on an order and see the lines at the bottom and then you get your document detail as well on the um, on the right hand side. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, all that top level information. You want to see the delivery address. We can set the delivery address on there. Um, if there's been any dispatches, we'd be able to see any dispatches on there as well. Um, 
and then we can see the quantity at the bottom. We can then click into the lines, see the line information on the side instead, and again, see dispatches, invoices. Um, but a lot of people like this um, pipeline as well, so they get used to seeing what these colors mean. So, you know, green being like fully dispatched uh, or fully invoiced, sorry, orange being dispatched, ready for invoice, red being that there's stock to be allocated on there. Um, so they're quite nice to look at and, and use visually. Now, these workspaces, I'm currently using them in the product. So with any of these, if I click on them, um, I can double click or go into kind of amend details and that will pop open my, my sales order um, form within Sage 200. However, we can also get this in um, a web browser as well. So just uh, drag that form over that's opened on my other screen. So we can open that. However, what we can also do um, is give people access to these workspaces in a browser. Um, it's, it's easier for those on standard because it's all already on the cloud. But for those that are um, on professional, obviously, if you're on our hosting solution, we can get you access to that over the web. If you're on a server, then you know we can make these things accessible over, over the web. Um, but users that have got a connected or web user license, we can give them access to a web user and they can view all of the same information in real time in a web browser. So if I was to go in and look at that sales document status workspace, it shows me exactly the same information as if I was in Sage 200, I'm just in a web browser now. Um, and I can still export to Excel and do whatever else I want in here, um, but I can't amend. So because we can't open those Sage forms, I can't amend any of the details in here. The other thing I can do in my workspace is especially useful in the browser is I can run certain reports. Now we can't add any reports to this. So what, what you see is what you get, but there is quite a lot of reports already in here, invoice profit reports, there's financial reports on here, TVs, p &Ls. Um, And when we open those, we get the criteria like we would in, in the Sage application. So that's just gonna open up with a new tab. It's just gonna load the report for me. And then it's gonna ask me for my criteria. So what do I wanna run onto here? And then when I run it, what that will actually do is it will run the reports, but it will give me a PDF preview because we don't have Sage's report designer in this view. So that's going to run and that's just going to give me a PDF of my, of my P&L layout. Now, those users that have got access to those web user licenses, they, of course, can also use the web portal that I talked about before. So um, I think the eventual plan is that there will be a link between go in to see the sales order document status workspace and being able to get into amend an order in the web portal. Um, but again, this is an area of the system that's kind of Sager actively investing in this. So people can go in, they can see their sales order lists. Um, if they've got the correct permissions, they can raise new orders, they can amend existing orders, and they can dispatch orders. That's one of the later things that was added. So we can go in and, and see quite nicely a, a web view. Um, of all that information. As I say, if you've got any bespoke, you won't see any bespoke functionality on here, but you could still give people access to view information if the standard Sage information is suitable for them to view. And equally, if somebody's just dispatching the order, um, then you can also do that on here. We can see all the information. It actually tells us a bit more than the, the desktop because there's a bit more dynamic fields on here. So we can see that you know these are late, they've highlighted orange. Um, I maybe don't have enough stock so it's highlighting those in orange as well, which is a bit more graphic and visual than we get in Sage 200 desktop. Um, we can see customers, we can add customers, and we can lock all these permissions down based on what a user does or doesn't need to access. Um, and as I say, these users need to have a web user license or a connected license. So even if you're a Sage 200 full user, you still need a web user license if you want to use the functionality um, in, in the web instead. So that's quite an underutilized kind of area of the system, really. The other um, area of the system that kind of falls into workspaces because it, it sits in workspaces um, is Excel reporting. So these are refreshable Excel reports and they, they kind of run pivot table reports. And again, if you've got people that are using the web workspaces, they can get access to these as well. And, and you can also access them um, in the desktop. So what these allow us to do is, for example, if we were to go in and look at a report, maybe like our stock transactions report, you'll see it's been completed and it gives me a last updated date. So it's not live. What we've got to do is tick on the report and press update. And it'll just tell us that it's queued for an update. And then it pops up saying, yep, it's been updated. So what we can then do is go down, select this report and hit view. That's going to download the report for us. And then it's just going to open Excel, which I will drag over. For you to see now. 
And depending on the report, will depend on what information we've got on here. So this is a, just an overall stock transactions report, and then it works very much like a pivot table. It, it is a pivot table, so we can go just show me all the goods in transactions, and that will filter all the goods out transactions, or maybe we can multi-select and show goods in and goods out on their own. Maybe oh, get rid of allocations and non-orders and just show goods in, goods out. Um, then we've got some stock profit by item, um, lowest profit by item. So we've got some report. Uh, charts on there and then the way that all of these run is effectively we get two tabs um, as default so there's the sage company tab just has the company name on it um, and then the stock transactions tab in this instance which is all the raw data now what you can do is you can change any of these pivot tables or add any additional tabs that you want using that raw stock transactions data and then within the workspaces you can actually upload your own copy um, of the report so actually that allows you to kind of customize it a little bit. And as long as that raw data, those two tabs that will be Sage underscore in any of the in any of the reports is kept the same, you can pull any data from that. So you can build your own custom reports within that Excel reporting. And so everybody's got access to that as well. And as I say, you can either use it in the web where I was just then, or it's actually got its own menu option in the desktop where you can get into Excel reports and, and see the same screen and get into them from there as well. Um, the other area of the system that's very underutilized, and I, and I can't unfortunately demonstrate it to you, so I'm just going to go in and um, just going to present my slide deck again instead. I'm just going to open it back up because it's just closed it. Bear with me. Um, is bank feeds. So a lot of people um, are starting to ask about bank feeds. A lot of people kind of don't know that they're already in there actually, and they can already use bank feeds. Um, so it's just another area that I wanted to to highlight as part of today's session. So I'm just going to just share my screen. Two seconds. Just find it on my list. There we go. So we just looked at workspaces um, and Excel reporting. Come on. Bank feeds and bank feed rules. So um, bank feeds um, are quite a nice area of the system that can help with both bank rec, but also streamlines, streamlining the um, cash management process. So there's a lot of banks on it now. Um, there was always kind of a big Barclays weren't on it and Barclays kind of didn't support bank feeds. Um, although I believe a lot of people have been moved over from Barclays.net or extended from Barclays.net into Barclays corporate. Um, and so those people that are on Barclays corporate login, or have a corporate login, um, that can now be connected up through bank feeds as well. And bank feeds lends itself to two functions, really. So the first function is the ability to reconcile. So on screen, you can see your Sage transactions and your bank transactions, and you can match them against each other rather than having to do it on a physical statement. But then you've also got bank feed rules, and that actually allows for the automation of uh, transactions to be created. So you can actually identify a bank transaction and then set up a rule where you can actually say, you know, create um, this transaction if it exists in the bank. So it can be based on things like dates, um, references, account numbers, maybe values. Um, and that allows you to raise customer payments, nominal payments, supplier payments, any of those transaction types, and they can go through an approvals function. So effectively, what you would do if you've got loads of direct debits, um, you would set up your, your bank feed um, rule, and then on a monthly basis, you just go into your bank feed approval, check what's in there, click approve, and they'll post through into the ledger without you having to post manually any of those transactions. So it can save quite a lot of time if you've got a lot of direct debit transactions, things where you're just literally having to go through your bank statement to create the relevant um, payment in Sage, and you don't always receive an invoice uh, monthly for those kind of things. You quite often receive quarterly or, or annual invoices as well. Obviously, last time we looked at the Ideas Hub, so um, all of these functions that Sage are adding in, um, a lot of them are coming from the Ideas Hub, so everyone can log into the Ideas Hub. You can get into it from within Sage by clicking the light bulb at the top as well um, and upvoting any of the ideas that you've got. So um, the example on the screen is many years ago, I um, raised an idea of the ability to make nominal accounts inactive. They added it for sales and purchase ledger way back, but they never added the ability to inactive nominal accounts. So I added that as an idea back in 2015, actually looking at this. Um, that was upvoted and then Sage added that functionality and I can't remember exactly what version it was added in, um, but that's now available in the product today. So that's an idea of um, that was added into the Ideas Hub. 
Um, and the last place you can go and have a look is at the roadmap as well. So the Sage 200 roadmap is public facing. Um, we'll obviously have just got the just released stuff on there now. So if we just share that and have a look at what we've got in there today. So we just share this screen and have a look what's in here today. We can see um, what's been delivered now. If we click on the delivered option, we can see that you know the August 2023 release, there's that web uh, customization changes in there. They have changed some API stuff um, that we can use for that. Um, and you know, as I mentioned, interest out for the Republic of Ireland, um, but mainly changes to that development kit so that we can start to customize those, those web workspaces and, and support the use of them in the future. So if we look at what's launching next, we'll see that the next launch is 2024 R1. And currently planned, we've got the ability to manage purchase orders. So we've currently got sales orders in the web portal. Purchase orders is looking to be added into that. Um, they'll continue to build out the API to support that web form development um, and expect 20, SQL 2017 to be retired. So if you're planning to sign off an upgrade anytime soon, um, it would be worthwhile making sure that you're on something newer like SQL 2019 or 2022. Um, because if not, your next upgrade, you, you're going to have to get rid of, of SQL 2017 anyway. Um, or if you know if your project spans a little bit longer and 2024 R1 has been released by the time you go live, we don't we don't want you to be going onto an older version. It's always best practice to go onto the newest that you can. Um, and then of course we've got kind of the changes coming into standard as well. Outside of that, we've then got the future. So you know there's things in here that again are under active consideration. So you can go in and vote for different functions in here that you might want to like. Um, and that's going to open up that ideas hub within Sage City. So you can click on any of those links. You can log in um, and you can upvote and put any comments onto any of the um, functions that have been that have been recommended. Um, and then what we'll also do is if there is things, so they're actively looking at a payment at the payment integration functions. Um, so actually you can click through and take a survey. This one's obviously ended, um, but there's always surveys on there that people that Sage will ask you to do if, if you're happy to um, to get involved with the product a bit more. The last thing uh, to mention then, just to kind of help you keep as up to date as possible is just to remind you all that we do offer a Sage in a Box solution, which is a cloud hosted environment for Sage 200 um, that we look after and, and support for you. Um, whilst there's a lot of benefits such as kind of the no overhead of the server, 24 seven access from any, any device anywhere. Um, in our latest release, we've started using um, newer Microsoft RDS functionality. So actually rather than having a full screen um, RDP connection, if you like, so that would take up your full desktop with a Sage uh, hosted desktop. Um, you can now have that in a web browser if you'd like instead. So actually within Chrome, you can have uh, Sage 200 open in a tab, but then you can carry on with your day-to-day -day business in your, uh, your standard PC effectively. It also means that it adds more support for other devices as well that support that web browser access. But the biggest benefit really that we're seeing for a lot of customers that have adopted um, this is that every time you need a Sage upgrade or you want a Sage upgrade, um, obviously there's still time involved in that. And you'll come to us and say, you know, we, we want to upgrade our Sage or we'll tell you that your version is going into extended support. Um, but unlike having a on-premise server or the cost of an on-premise server, every time we upgrade you within Sage in a box, we will give you a new server with the latest supported server and SQL versions with the upgrade. Which means that you're not you're never having an in-place upgrade. It gives you the opportunity to test, especially with newer features coming in, bespoke recompiles, but also with the confidence that you're on the latest releases of of Windows and SQL without the cost that that would usually incur from having an on-premise server. If nobody has any more questions, then um, we can we can wrap up. <laughs>